um, in this presentation we will uh, look at an example of a binomial probability distribution. Here's the context of our example. We have a loaded six-sided die. Uh, the probability of obtaining a six when rolling this die is p equals 0.4. And consequently, the probability of not rolling is 6 is going to be 1 minus 0.4, or 0 0.6. We're calling that Q. So the probability of rolling is 6, we're calling P equals 0.4. The probability of not rolling is 6, we're calling Q, which is 0.6. Now we're making reference to a loaded die, a loaded six-sided die. What that means is that the die is not fair. And, um, and we can see that from the probability of gaining 6. If, this, if the die were fair, the probability of gaining 6 would have to be 1 out of 6, not 0.4. So that's what we mean by loaded. It is not fair. Uh, here's our experiment for this example. Uh, we're going to roll our are loaded six-sided die a total of 16 times. Now, let x be the number of sixes obtained. x is a random variable here. Uh, find the probability that a, exactly seven sixes are obtained, b, at least two sixes are obtained. Uh, if we translate part A, uh, what we're looking for is the probability that our random variable equals 7. In other words, the number of 6s is 7. That's what we want. <coughs> so, here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to consider a uh, the number of cases that we get of getting exactly seven sixes. Here on, here on this board I have a couple of them. The first seven are sixes, the remaining ones, the remaining nine are not. And uh, here's another case, maybe the first one was a six, the second one was not, the next five were sixes, the one after that, those not, and then a six, and then the remaining not sixes. So, what do we do to find the probability that x equals seven? We'll have to find the probabilities of all these outcomes, and then we would have to add them to get the result. So, that seems like a very difficult task, but let's let's take a look at these two out, at these two particular cases. Let's find the probability of each. What is the probability of getting six is six is six all the way onto the seventh one and then non sixes? Well, let's see. What is the probability of getting six? The probability of getting six in on this die on this uh, loaded die. I have my loaded die right here. Uh, it's going to be 0. 0.4, and the second one 0. 0.4, and the third one 0. 0.4, all the way up until the seventh one. So it's 0. 0.4 multiplied by 0. 0.4 multiplied by that, 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 0. 0.4. Now the remaining nines are, the, the remaining nine uh, outcomes are not sixes. What is the problem of obtaining? of not rolling a 6. Well, in each case, 0.6. So here the probability of, of this outcome, whatever it is, it, we don't know what it is, but we know it's probably is point <coughs> a 6. And the probability of not getting a 6, point 0.6. And so on, up until the last one. Now, so how do we find the probability of getting the first seven sixes and the remaining ones not sixes. Well, let's multiply them out. Multiply 0. 0.4 times 0. 0.4 times 0. 0.4, da, da, 0. 0.4, uh, 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.6, da, 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 0. 0.6. The result will be 0. 0.4 to the seventh power 
uh, times 0.6 to the ninth power because there are nine of them. If we consider this other case, let's observe that when we compute the probability of this case, we are going to get 0.4 to the seventh power because we do have seven sixes here as well. 0.4 here, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, a total of seven of them. So our overall probability will be 0.4 to the seventh times uh, 0 0.6 to the ninth because there will be nine non sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 0.6 to the ninth. The conclusion we should draw out of this is that it does not matter what case we're looking at, the probability of each of them will always turn out to be 0 0.4 to the seventh times 0 0.6 to the ninth. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find out how many positive outcomes there are, and we're going to multiply that number by 0 0.4 to the seventh times 0 0.6 to the ninth. That should give us our overall probability that exactly six sixes, excuse me, exactly seven sixes are obtained. So let's see. I have drawn 16 spots down here, and what I want to know is count the number of ways of placing seven sixes there. Uh, you want to place seven sixes in these 16 spots, uh, there happen to be 16 to 7 ways of doing that. So 16 choose 7. So there are 16 to 7 outcomes that have exactly 7 sixes. So we're going to multiply that by the individual probabilities. They're all the same, so you just multiply them. 0.4 to the seventh times 0.6 to the ninth. Uh, in order to finish the problem, we will have to employ a calculator. Uh, I did employ a calculator earlier to get the answers to these guys, to, to, to this calculation, excuse me. So let me clear the board here a little bit to present those results. I'm just copying the results from somewhere else. I've done this already. When I put this in my calculator, 16 to 7, I get uh, 11,440. When I put 0.4 to the 7th in my calculator, I get a rather long uh, string of numbers 0 0.0016384 uh, times when I put 0 0.6 to the 9th in my calculator I get 0 0.01007777 and exactly I did I, I did I did check this carefully and I did get ex you are supposed to get this exactly like if you did this on a computer this would be exact a, a results. Now what, then you would multiply these three things and when you multiply them you end up getting a probability of point eighteen eight 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 um, you know, four eights and then a nine a two and there is some other stuff in there and yeah, I didn't I, it didn't fit in this on the screen of the calculator so I just said it continues a little more. All right, now let's look at our uh, part B. For part B, <coughs> uh, we want the probability that x is greater or equal to 2. Uh, this problem could be complicated because if you if you look at what you're being asked, you're being asked to consider cases where you get exactly two sixes, exactly three sixes, all the way up to exactly sixteen sixes. Uh, if you were to consider those cases, you will end up having to add these individual probabilities. Probability that x equals two plus probability that x equals a 3 plus all the way up to the probability that x equals 16 and then 
in order to compute these individual probabilities, you have to be making considerations such as this one right here. So that is going to be a, a very long calculation, a very tedious calculation. So a problem like this is better done um, by uh, thinking a little bit cleverly here. We have to be a little bit clever. Uh, what do I have? I have a pro the probability of a bunch of alternatives, but if you were to look at the complement, the probability, if you look at the complement, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 will be 1 minus the probability that x is not greater or equal to 2. But what does it mean to be not greater than or equal to 2? It means that x is either 0 or 1. This is the same as 1 minus the probability that x equals 0 or x equals 1. Uh, what is that? 1 minus probability x equals 0 minus probability x equals 1. Uh, I'm being able to split this up because these are exclusive alternatives, so we can use our addition rule for probabilities. Uh, what is this? Well, if you have zero, exactly zero sixes, that means that all of your outcomes are not sixes. Uh, so the probability of the first one is 0 0.6, up until the probability of the last one will be 0 0.6. They're all the same, 0 0.6, so you have 16 of them, 0 0.6 to the 16th. Minus. Now, if you have exactly one six, then you have 0 0.4 for that one six, and you have to you have 0 0.6 to the 15 for the 15 non sixes. So how many cases do you have? Well, you have to place one of those sixes in a, one of these spots, one of the 16 spots. Well, there are 16 choose one ways of doing that, or simply 16. So it's equal to one minus point. 6 to the 16 minus 16 choose 1 is 16 times 0.4 is supposed to be 0.4 right here times 0 0.6 to the 15th uh, again I crunched these numbers earlier I calculated this in various steps but at the end this was the result uh, 1 minus these two combined gives you 0 0.003 Three, two, nine, one, two, and some junk. And when you do this final calculation, you get point nine nine six seven zero eight and some junk. It does terminate, uh, but uh, my calculator doesn't display all the digits that you obtain. All right, uh, we have finished up two examples. Let me kind of quickly. Uh, make reference to the formula that would be used in a general case. So, as our title here says, this is an example of a binomial distribution. Uh, a binomial distri in a binomial distribution, you have the following. You are performing an experiment uh, where <clears throat> you perform a fixed number of trials uh, to get each outcome. Uh, the trials uh, the, will have a success and a failure. Only two possible <clears throat> outcomes to each trial. Uh, the probability of success we're going to call P. Probability of success. And Q we're going to call uh, the probability of failure of, or non-success, which is 1 minus p. Now, what we do is we're going to define a random variable x to be the number of successes. So if you want the probability that x is precisely k, then we'll say, okay, I have k successes, so that will be p to the k, and I'll have n minus k failure, so that will be q to the n minus k. That will take care of each individual, the probability of each individual outcome. So then you'll say, okay, how many of these outcomes are there? Well, 
you can imagine, in spots, you want to place k successes on these spots. How many ways of doing that? n choose k. So this right here is a formula uh, for a binomial distribution, a binomial probability distribution, <clears throat> where you want exactly k successes. All right, very quickly, suppose you want probability x is greater than or equal to k. Uh, one direct way of viewing this is probability uh, x equals k plus probably that until the last one, probably x equals n. Now, if there are too many of these, then you would like to look at the complement. Instead, you'll say 1 minus probability that x is less than k, and of course you have to go ahead and list, uh, break this up into your individual probabilities, probability x equals 0 plus probability x equals 1, all the way to probability x is k minus 1. Just as in our second example right here. Uh, this concludes our presentation.